Comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today we're going to be attempting a docking with our new space station. Now, of course, here I have uh, rebuilt the space station, as I said in the comment on the previous video. I took one of the hitchhiker containers out because, in hindsight, it clearly doesn't look quite right to have two. It's a bit too long, this whole section here. So with that removed, I think I'm much happier with the overall appearance of the Salute 1. Also what I did, and this is not really necessary because the Salute 1 also had the Orion 1 Space Telescope uh, Observatory on board. Now for us, we have of course the, uh, what is it called, the Sentinel? space telescope or infrared telescope so i put one of those on board and just one of these adapters to make the thing look a bit nicer so that's of course not necessary at all but here we now have the uh, new and improved salute one so of course this was also in the dropbox folder if you wanted to take a look at that now in this case, I've already done the docking. I just wanted to see exactly how difficult it would be, but it was not really a challenge at all. So, of course, these docking antennas really help with getting the alignment right there. Also, what I've done is I've slightly modified the Soyuz to now have two solar panels instead of one, given the experience that we had yesterday with the uh, Salyut, since that does look better to have two, even though they do rotate individually which is of course not really what we want but we can't turn that off so on the balance again it's better to have two so uh, with this already done i'm going to just undock here and there's actually another space station in orbit we could use that as well the other salute one this is the one without the telescope but I would like us to dock with this one. So uh, yes, if you're interested in the whole process of docking, maybe it's something you haven't quite mastered yet, let's have a look at the whole thing. So we're not going to be building anything in this episode. Let me just undock here and return to Kerbin, and then I will meet up with you again. So comrades, we are back here now, and it was a successful landing with Jeb, Bill and Bob. So now here is of course the Soyuz X, so this is my modified one with the two solar panels. I also just increased the strength of the ejection force here of the fairings because again there's uh, a need for that. If they're bigger then it's usually better to have more force just so they separate cleanly, especially if it's a clamshell deploy. So anyway comrades, let's select our brave crew. Now, of course, Jeb, Bill and Bob were just in space, so let's pick somebody else. So I'm just going to remove them. We'll take Valentina and we want one engineer, so let's take Hermes here. And one scientist, Linman. Let's just give them all the new suits as well. So we are going to launch from the Woomerang launch site because this is where we launched the station from. Of course you don't have to, you can do it from the normal uh, launch site as well because you just follow the incline of the station. But I think for the demonstration purposes it would be better if we used the Woomerang site. So let's go there now and uh, have a look at the situation. Now, of course, it's night here, comrades, but that doesn't really matter. Let's just see where the orbits are right now. Of course, I'm going to have to keep in mind which one I'm looking for. I'm looking for the Salute uh, MHE telescope. That's the one I want. So set as target. That's always the first step. Now, we will have two opportunities per day to meet up with an inclined orbit because that's when we pass underneath. So it's going to happen somewhere here near dawn. So at least we will have some light there. Now I'm going to split this whole thing up into three parts, comrades. The three parts of a successful docking. The first part is the launch. So for this, we have to just line up properly. So let's speed up time. We won't lose any electric charge or anything, so it's not a problem. Just until we can get close to the 
orbit itself. So that's us, of course. Just more or less, but obviously more accurate is better. Now, actually, we have a very interesting situation here because our target is now coming up uh, towards us, but we still are not quite there yet. We could launch now and actually probably have a quite an easy meetup, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Also, this will be a good demonstration of what to do if the target is not near you. So there it goes directly above us, but that's okay. Let's speed up a little bit more. So, okay, now we are pretty much where we need to be. Now, comrades, when we launched the station, we launched in an east, an easterly direction. So we're going to have to do the same again. However, a very easy thing, we can still speak because we have a little bit of time left before we are directly underneath and we don't have to be too precise there. But we actually have a very good indication here. If we select the target, of course, we now are pointing away from it because it's underneath us on the other side of the planet. But So that's why we're getting the retro here of the target. But that actually shows us exactly where we want to be. This is our orbital inclination. So we can see here, the uh, because it's now on the other side there, it's actually just above the 270 line, which means if you just draw a straight line from that reticule there through the center of the nav ball and out the other side, that's where we want to be. So in that case, we want to be just actually underneath the 90, so uh, towards the north actually. And uh, also we have to keep in mind with that, because we are already moving uh, a little bit because of the orbit of the planet here, once we pass around 35 or 36 kilometers, the orbital velocity here is going to be added to that uh, of ours at that time. So actually we want to be launching a little bit further away from the 90 than our target is suggesting uh, that we should be. So with that, comrades, we don't even need to look at the uh, normal and anti-normal nodes and all of that, ascending and descending. We can just use this as our indication. So let's prepare for this launch and uh, just, of course, do all the normal procedures. So three, two, one. And there we go, comrades. So now we're just going to go straight up a little bit. Of course, this depends entirely on the performance of your rocket. With this one, we have quite a high thrust-to-weight ratio, so we can turn a little bit sooner. So for this, I want to be just below the 90. Of course, keeping in mind that the orbital rotation of the planet here is still going to be added. But more or less like that. We don't need to be, again, too precise. This is going to be... Uh, relatively easy because we are directly underneath the orbit anyway so east is anyway a good direction to go so yes now it's just a normal launch here our crew is very happy they're looking forward to spending some time in orbit uh, they have never been to the station yet so the target is now actually pretty much on the other side of the planet which means we want it to probably catch up to us. We could go the other way and catch up to the target, but again, that's pretty much either or right now because it's on the other side, so it doesn't really matter. But I prefer to have the target catch up to me, unless, of course, we are right behind the target because then we just go into a slightly higher orbit. It's much easier than going into a lower one. Otherwise, you now have to worry about entering into the atmosphere and all of that. So let's just keep up with this launch. And uh, as long as we're slightly beneath the 90. Now, the orbit has been added there. So I guess we can moderate that a little bit. This is not an optimal launch, by the way, but that's okay. Let's just have a look now. You see, I think we're going to do quite well. And for me, I like to meet up, obviously, in the daytime. And therefore, launching in the daytime is a good thing because I use the initial orbital insertion point as the sort of reference for the meetup. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. 
but we can get rid of all of the fairings. It can even have a bit of extra force there with the detachment. Oh, got some explosions here today. Didn't see that one before. It's because we're separating so high up already. Hmm, oh well. Let's just see. We want to aim for about 150 kilometers. So uh, from there on we will of course just do a normal orbital insertion. The node is actually, look at that, 0 0.6 degrees. So quite quite on the mark I would say just by using the retrograde of the target on the nav ball. I've had situations where I am now launching and I'm just monitoring this stuff the whole time, the descending and the ascending and I have to maneuver the rocket and all of that. It gets a little overwhelming so just keep an eye on what the nav ball is telling you because that will show you your inclination. So now we just want an orbital insertion. So let us plan this out a little bit. So add maneuver. Of course, the target is on the opposite side. So again, it doesn't matter at this point whether we catch up to it or whether it catches up to us. But I prefer to just go higher than the target. So uh, let's see. We first, of course, have to get into an orbit. That's the main thing. But we know it's going to have to be a higher orbit. So right now it's not telling us where we're going to meet up because our inclination is still slightly off. But because this point is actually close to the descending node, we can fix that already. So let me just keep that open by right clicking on it. And that's 0 0.2. So that's pretty much as good as we're going to get it. Let's see if it tells us now. No. Doesn't show it yet. We have to get into an orbit first. That's fine. So with this new, uh, what's this mod called again? The uh, better information here about meeting up. Our comrades were a little bit late because I was looking up the name of this mod that gives us this information. That's the better burn time mod. So that actually tells you exactly when you should be burning. But we're a bit late, but that's okay. We still are quite far away from the target, so it doesn't really matter as long as we get into an orbit now. And uh, so we'll just say follow the maneuver node there. So I don't think this stage is going to be quite enough. In the test that I did now previously, it was not enough. But the, of course, we still have lots of fuel on the Soyuz itself, so we will not have a problem at all. Just need to get into a stable orbit first. Then we can begin with stage 2 of our docking adventure. We might actually have enough fuel this time. Shows my ascent previously was not as good as I thought. Mm, although no, we're not going to have enough. Just separate and ignite the onboard engine. Now of course that is much weaker but again it doesn't matter. We're not going to be in any danger of re-entering now. So I think really what we just want now is to get into a stable orbit. So we can actually cancel all of the maneuvers and all of that. Let's make it nice and simple. Just get into an orbit. The sending node is still 0 0.2 so uh, again that's quite on the mark there. Just watching to see, that's of course the trajectories mod telling us where we would re-enter. But you don't need any mods for this. I just have this of course for extra information, but you don't need that. 92, 93, now because we're a bit late it's skewing the whole thing, so I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Okay, so now comrades, we have done the launch and we are in orbit, so now we begin phase 2. So phase two is the rendezvous. Any docking has to begin with a rendezvous first. So we have to get close to our target. Now at this point, I'm going to again use the Apo apps here as my reference point. Now I know it's a little bit too high. So maybe actually we could just use this n uh, node here or this point where we're crossing the orbit of the target. So add maneuver there. Although this doesn't really matter where we put it. So let's see if I just burn straight 
out now or what is it telling us? When are we going to meet up? Now you see that's obviously incorrect. It would seem like it's forever, but it's because you have to be very close to the target before the nodes here will actually tell you where your meetup point will be. You see, if I do it here, it's not telling me anything. It's just showing target position there and there. And you can get quite confused because you're wondering, why am I not meeting up with the target? But it's because if you move this to the point where the orbits cross, where you're closest, you'll see it's going to show us exactly when we meet up. Here comes the target now. Just there. That's it. Now, of course, maybe we could even do it less than that. Let's see. No, that is unfortunately going to have to be it. So it's going to be quite a burn to meet up because it's so far away right now. But it doesn't matter. We have more than enough fuel. And that gives us a meeting of 2.6 kilometers separation. So that's actually quite fine for a rendezvous. So let's plan this thing out. It's in 32 minutes, so it's still a long time. But let's just press the number one key and deploy all of our antennas and solar panels and all of that. And then just get to the target there. Now, in my case, I like to turn off the SAS because it's such a small little burn there or puff of monopropellant. So you don't really need the SAS going crazy now. And then I just lock it in again. So now we can fast forward. Now this better burn time mod is telling me with our current engine, I need to burn 117 seconds to complete this 267.7 meters of delta V. Now again here, it's, uh, it's telling me exactly when I need to begin the burn and all of that, but the normal nav ball will still give you more than adequate information. So you don't again have to feel that you need this mod. So let's get closer. What would that be? 117. So that would be just under a minute, I would say, before the node. So it's almost two minutes of burn time, but we have more than enough fuel. Okay, so this thing is now going to count down exactly when I need to start the burn. And here's the RCS going nuts again. So two, one, burn. Now we just wait. Our crew is very happy. I could even move some of them over to the orbital module. That's of course why it's there. But I doubt they would do it during a burn. So let's wait instead. There is some debris. Actually a good comment on the last video. I should add a probe core to the upper stages of the rockets like the Proton. So we can deorbit it once we're done with it. That's definitely the responsible thing to do. And that's in fact a very good orbital debris mitigation standard. And uh, these things are of course real. Uh, they do encourage launch operators to do that. So. I'm definitely going to try that. With the Soyuz upper stage, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe. Of course, the other thing then is I have to add RCS to it as well, because there's no reaction wheels in my games. So uh, to rotate it the other way around. Although again, technically we don't need to do that. Hmm. And batteries as well, because it won't have solar panels. But uh, we can certainly do that in the future. 44 seconds, crew is still in good spirits, and we have lots and lots of fuel here. Actually too much, but I think it's better to have too much than too little. Now another thing I might want to tweak on this craft is the reverse control of the uh, RCS is very weak. It's 55 like all the others, but because of its angle it's actually very underpowered. So I'm going to put that to 100%. I'll do that on the craft in the VAB as well, but I'll show you in a minute why I'm doing that. Let's just follow the target there. Okay, 0 0.2 meters per second off. I think that's pretty adequate. So right now, actually, it's 4.6 kilometers. So you see even that little bit has quite a big difference. Let's do a bit of a retro here with the RCS 
turn the RCS off. Of course, it will keep trying to stabilize itself and that can mess up your encounter a little bit. But 2.4 I think is pretty good. So now we can actually just fast forward to this point here. So warp there. And we still have to give ourselves enough time to finalize the encounter. So don't go too close. Now again, the better burn time thing is telling us exactly when we'll be meeting up and all of that. But you don't need that. So let's see, it's now 29 kilometers away. That's still very far. But our difference in velocity is actually quite high. So keep an eye on this. Make sure also that you're showing the target information, not the orbit, because now we want to switch over to the target with the rendezvous. So keep in mind also if the if the number here is quite high, 266 for a low carbon orbit is quite high, then you want to be making your corrections quite early. So I'd say when we're about 10 kilometers away. Just to give ourselves a bit of room here. Now I will say also I have the docking alignment mod there. But I'm not going to be using it for this demonstration. So now we just have to rotate around to the retro. So we want to be pointing away from the craft. Because we want to cancel out this velocity here. However, I've seen a lot of people and it's much easier to do that. You just cancel out all your velocity and then you start moving towards the target. But it's in fact much better to use this velocity to take you towards the target. So what I'm doing now is I actually kept it for a little bit too late here. So we're going to have to make some more adjustments, but that's all right. So actually I'm using this to push the... Uh, our retro towards the retro of the target but because I kept it so late now it's messing everything up so I'm unfortunately going to have to be uh, cancelling out our velocity here so that's actually a good demonstration for what not to do if you're moving quite fast relative to the target you should start your burn very early more, more than 10 kilometers away but that's okay this is actually again good for showing what to do now so in this case if you're moving now ahead of your target you missed the whole encounter then it's best to just cancel out pretty much all of your velocity here relative to the target then we will correct the whole thing again Also, we have to keep in mind here, our engine is not that powerful, so it's taking us a long time to cancel this. Mm, oh well, it's nothing we can't fix. 70 and still dropping. still have enough fuel. Of course we do have to keep an eye on that but we are not going to be doing much more burn after this. Hmm, the burn time thing is actually giving us more information here but we can just go back here to the map. So we see now in 10, uh, oh no, 1 minute and 30 seconds we can have a 10 kilometer separation with a relative speed of 10 meters per second. Now I wonder if that's not again the better burn time mod telling us that. But okay, now all that we want to do is let's burn a little bit towards our target. So we point directly towards the target and just burn the engine a little bit. But we can actually match them up quite nicely now. Not too much because we're going to have to cancel this out again. So we see actually there's a closer encounter further down the orbit. So in six minutes we'll be two kilometers away. So I think that's the one I'm going for. So at this point I'm going to be early and just turn us around again. We definitely want to be pointing away from the target. So this is now taking us back to where we were a few minutes ago so, uh, and all my babbling leading to missing the whole thing. But you can see now here the retro of the target and our retro is actually almost aligned. So that's why we're getting such a close encounter. This is really what you want. So let's fast forward now until we get, uh, well, this is telling us we're going to be 1.3 kilometers away, which is even better. 
And now our relative velocity is much lower, so we can wait until we're almost at that distance before we start acting. Okay, we're now 1.4 kilometers away, 34 kilo, uh, meters per second difference. So now we just make sure that our retro is in between the retro of the target and our direction of, of that we're pointing in. And then we just burn to push that onto the target's retro as well. In this way, we don't have to cancel out all of our velocity, but we are slowing down and we're making a maneuver here that brings us much closer. So you see now we're going to be 200 meters away and we're only 13 meters per second difference now. So that's much better. So in this case, we can wait pretty much until we are, I would say, 300 meters away. However, you have to be careful because you can get so accurate here that you actually impact the target. So just be careful of that. So now we burn again to push the retro onto the target there. But again, don't cancel all of your velocity. You still want it to take you towards the target. Now we're probably going to have, I doubt if we'll have an actual impact, but we might get very close to having one. So let's turn around now and point directly towards the target. Now in this case it's often useful to use the fine controls, but I'm not going to do that because I need the RCS to actually slow us down. And we're getting quite close now, so it might be a good idea to start doing that. This is why I had to turn its power up. You see, oh, it's going to get close. We shouldn't have an impact, though. That's why it's also good not to be too accurate. Okay, now we're zero, zero, and we're 16 meters away. Now, the easiest thing to do here is uh, to switch to the other craft and then point the docking port towards us here. Then, of course, we just have to make a minor correction and dock. So it's very easy that way. And that's, in fact, what I like to do for the Apollo mission to the moon, because there's a crew member on the uh, CSM anyway, so they can just change their direction a little bit and that makes the whole thing so much easier but in this case I'm actually going to move us towards the docking port there so now I think the first thing I want to do is just change my role a little bit and let's have a look we're still moving a little bit but turning the SAS on will now lead to it using the RCS the whole time but we still have lots of monopropellant. Now, though, I'm going to switch to the fine controls because that will also help save some monopropellant there. So let's see. Actually, what I want to do now is point more in line with the target. Now, you see, also by having the SAS on, it's trying to counter my moves here. So that actually can lead to even more difference in velocity there. Let's just see which camera is the best. Probably the orbital one. Maybe the chase. Locked. Mm. Actually, I would recommend the locked. Just because then it tells you exactly which way you want to translate. Now, in the case of our craft, because of the capsule there, it's not actually uh, going to take you up uh, when you translate, it's going to take you that way, which is actually sideways, but that's okay. Once you're in the locked position, that becomes much easier. Now, what we want to do here is just move forward very slowly. We want to be in front of the docking port, not behind, but we just also want to watch out for those solar panels. Now, the problem here is we're actually moving towards the night side now. So we don't have a um, huge amount of time for this. But that's okay. We should be done before we get into the dark side. Or are we actually moving the other way? No, we're going into the dark side. That's all right. It's often easiest then, I think, if you're moving to the dark side, to just try and 
maintain the station keeping so you wait until you're back in the day side. Okay, we've pretty much cancelled out our velocity now again. But what we want to do now is just rotate and point towards the docking port. Now in this case I'm turning the SAS off. Just doing one puff of monopropellant and that will turn us. Otherwise it's going to keep trying to cancel it. Which is not what I want. So we can take our time now because we're just moving uh, 0 0.1 meters per second relative to the target. But we're almost ready to begin phase 3 which is docking. So now of course we just want to make sure our docking ports are actually pointing to each other. And in this case I just want us to rotate a little bit further. Just have to get ready to stop now. Almost there. Okay, that'll be good enough for now, but of course we still have to move down a little bit. Now again, up and down and all that is quite relative here, but that's why having a locked camera actually helps quite a lot. Hmm, let's just see what's happening here now. Maybe I should use the SAS again. Let's just keep moving down. Now we have to be sure to keep control of this situation because of the SAS it might actually mess up our plans here. Okay, let's just move back up again. Now again you don't have to be too precise with this sort of thing because the whole thing is magnetic it's actually going to correct your whole direction there once you get close. But in our case, I think now because we're on the dark side, let's let's just do station keeping. But now look at this SAS thing. I'm sure this has to be fixed in a future update. Because it will keep messing the whole thing up now. It doesn't ever stop. Look at that. I have to turn it off. Hmm. Oh well. Now in this case, we want to pretty much come to a stop relative to the target. There, zero, zero. Now, of course, there will be some drift because we are actually not on the same orbital plane there. But uh, let's just keep an eye on this. We're drifting away a little bit. So we can counter that. Just fast forwarding until we're on the day side. Almost. Because of our inclination, actually, the, the night side doesn't last very long right now. There, that'll be much, much easier for us. So now, of course, we have to do the whole thing over again. But you know, that's the whole challenge of docking. So let's just make sure we point towards the target there. And because the whole mass is not perfectly balanced, every time we make a change, it will change our rotation very slightly. And then go crazy. So let's just speed up a little bit. This will take us closer again. I think that will do. So now turn that off and just point parallel to the target. So not quite at the docking port yet. Hmm. Let's go up a little bit. And of course closer to that side. Oh yes, we're almost there comrades, almost there. Let's just go back down again. Ah, we're losing control of it. We're losing control of it. So what do you do in this case? Well, in this case, you just want to make sure that your SAS is on and push your uh, retro back onto your marker and then cancel it out. 
pretty much. So what do we do now? Now we have to do the whole thing again. How are we doing on monopropellant? We still have tons. It's really not a problem. But look at this SAS. It can't make up its mind. That's really a problem for me. Hmm. Oh well. So let us just go closer again. That's why I don't like using the SAS now. This is of course much easier if you have a reaction wheel, but since we don't have a reaction wheel, we have to make do without one. Okay, we're almost there. Let's just slow down now. Okay, now let us point towards the target again. Very gently though. Well, our Kerbals are happy. They still have faith. It's only been two hours, although of course it feels a lot longer with all of these adjustments happening. Okay, SAS on. Let's stop that drift. Now, let us point towards the target. You can of course use the auto thing to do this, but now of course it's changing our velocity the whole time. But that might just be easier. Of course, I want us to roll a little bit so that our antennas will line up. And now we can see we have a big gap between us and the target. So let's just cancel that out first. And the SAS will now keep wobbling there. But let's move closer again. Not too fast though. Look at this thing, drifting back and forth. Just gonna try and get us pointing closer to them again. Although again, you don't have to do any of this. This is just me being extra now. You can just get close now and the whole thing will line up because of the magnetic forces. Let's move back up again. Back down to cancel. Because we're using fine controls, this is not really using a lot of monopropellant. So where are we now? Oh, okay. Just stop us right there. Still want us to move up a little bit. Okay, that's pretty much it. Just make sure our roll is correct. Oh, we're drifting. Ah, it's gonna go. Turn SAS off, makes it easier. What on earth? Okay, there it's done. Are we pointing in the right way? Slightly off, but hey, there we are, comrades, there we are, we've docked. It did take longer than I was anticipating, but there it is. So with this sort of thing, the biggest thing, because you can never, pre uh, you know, predict exactly what's going to happen and how the craft is going to behave. It's really just the golden rule to take things very slowly. Just make small adjustments, see what happens, and then make further small adjustments. Let's just turn the SAS off because we're drifting again, but now it's never going to settle again. Hmm. Just go back to the free camera. And then, where are we now in this uh, orbit? I think let's go a little bit further. Just until we're about halfway there. And then just point towards the prograde. Just get our station nicely aligned with the orbit here. And then, roll. Roll. 
Now, of course, in this case, the telescope is going to be pointing down towards the planet. But once we're on the other side of the orbit, it's going to be pointing out to space. Now, although this whole telescope thing was uh, explicitly said to be studying stars and things like that, I cannot be convinced that the Russians did not point it towards the ground as well. So in this case now we're studying the ground there and then at night we're doing the official mission of uh, looking at the stars and doing spectral whatever analyses and all of that sort of thing. Okay, now we just turn the whole thing off because it's going to keep going crazy. So now let's take the crew over. Uh, just right click of course, transfer crew and uh, we have lots of space here for them. There's actually an empty seat on the hitchhiker container, which is good because it gives them enough room. So let's have a look inside. There they are comrades and we have a very strange effect there. I wonder what's causing this now. Very odd. Now with these windows we can still double click and actually have a look around. But with the other capsules we can't do that anymore. What's happening here? There's nothing blocking it. Strange. Oh well. Minor things that still need to be fixed I guess. But there's our telescope. We can't do anything with it uh, practically, of course. It will just say it has to be in a solar orbit. So log observation data. It can't be done now. Start tracking. Needs to be in a solar orbit. But in this case, it's just for the appearance there. So comrades, that's a very uh, convoluted docking uh, tutorial there. But it's the three stages. First, just make sure that you match the orbit uh, in terms of the inclination when you're taking off and watch the nav ball more than the ascending and the descending nodes. Just make sure that you're in line with the uh, target on the nav ball. Then once you're in orbit, decide what you need to do. Do you need to catch up to the target or does the target need to catch up to you? If you're in a situation where you're on opposite sides of the planet, it's totally up to you. But in my experience, it works better for me to raise my orbit because if I have to lower it and we're in a very low orbit, you might actually enter into the atmosphere. So be careful of that. Then uh, also make sure that your uh, maneuver is done where the craft are actually very close in terms of their orbits. Otherwise, it's not going to show you the exact meetup nodes there. Then uh, the next stage is, of course, the rendezvous. So just get close, but don't cancel out all of your relative velocity. But make sure you do it early enough, not like I did it now. And then just steer your retro or your, yeah, your retrograde towards the retro of the target until they are pretty much lined up. But then also be careful because if they are precisely lined up, you might actually impact your target. Then you just do the actual docking. Then, of course, it's much easier to just rotate the target towards you and then proceed with the docking. But if you don't want to do that, it's uh, oftentimes going to devolve into this situation that we had, uh, where you sort of have to be drifting back and forth and just sort of get your alignment right. But there, the golden rule is very small steps. And then just get close. Any other sort of misalignment that you have will be cancelled out by the magnetic forces of the docking ports. And that's that. Then, of course, it's easy to undock. You just uh, find the active port there and say undock and uh, return to Kerbin. Of course, in this case, you can actually use the engine on the station to deorbit the whole stack here and then just detach, of course, your capsule and land. So that's it comrades. In the next episode, uh, I'm not sure what we'll be building, but uh, I'll still give that some thought. And then I will see you soon comrade, soon. I hope your docking is successful and that it happens with slightly less uh, effort than this one happened. But hey, it was a good demonstration. So uh, thank you for watching comrades. Have a fantastic day as always.